A year's worth of planning, waiting, and developing is over. 32 men and one woman will race in multi-million dollar race cars averaging speeds at over 240 miles per hour at 200 laps around the grand old lady the world calls the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This year is the 107th running of the greatest spectacle in racing, a time-honored American event that has been going on since 1911. In the beginning, the track was paved with 3.2 million bricks, hence Indy's nickname, The Brickyard. After six hours of racing at an average speed of 74 miles per hour, Cyrus Pechke and Ray Haroon would drive the Marmon Wasp to win the first race. Today, the track is paved with asphalt, with a strip of the original bricks as the finish line to define the Speedway's heritage. 230 miles per hour is now the standard speed at Indy. In its 112-year history, over 750 drivers have raced this event, but only 74 have won. Winning the Indianapolis 500 is the pinnacle of any race driver's career. With speedy risks and dangers always involved, the rewards are incomparable. Each year, many different records get broken. Many leave the race disappointed, while one driver's dream comes true with his or her face and name etched on the Borg Warner Trophy, a sip of cold milk, over a million dollars in prize money, and being remembered forever as a winner of the greatest spectacle in racing. This is the Indianapolis 500. fans, welcome to Formula Pun Racer. I am Aaron Cylinder, firing on all cylinders. With less than a week to go before the 107th running of the Indianapolis 500, the tension and excitement for this great American tradition is beginning to build. For all the 33 drivers, they definitely got big knots in their stomach as they wait for the green flag to fly in 200 laps around the greatest spectacle in racing, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It will be a race of excitement, and already many records have been shattered. And for the first time in two years, more than 33 drivers have been vying for 33 positions. But it was only one driver who ended up getting bumped out. And it all began with the struggling Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan racing team who was trying so hard to get up to speed and couldn't. In the final minutes of the final day of qualifying, Jack Harvey ended up bumping out his own teammate Graham Ray Hall, leaving Graham definitely upset. But Jack Harvey was definitely sorry for Graham and went to console him at least, so that's always a good sport there. But that was far from over. That was just the beginning of things about to happen. The day after qualifying, there was a big practice crash involving Catherine Legg of Ray Hall, Lennon, and Lanigan and Dry and Reinbold racer Stefan Wilson of Sheffield, England. Both the two British drivers ended up in the turn one wall. Catherine Legg was okay, but unfortunately Stefan Wilson fractured a T12 vertebra and has been ruled out from racing this year. So his quest to race in next year's Indy 500 has already begun. And who was going to replace him, you ask? It turned out to be none other than Graham Rahal. Which is interesting because Graham actually did do business with Ryan Reinbold in a one-off race in Iowa in 2010. And of course, to win it for Stefan Wilson would mean a lot, especially since Graham Rahal began his IndyCar career as teammates to Stefan Wilson's older brother, the late Justin Wilson. So I say that is good favor for uh, Dryden Reinbold to let in Graham Rahal. Oh, almost certainly. No doubt about it. If Stefan Wilson wasn't hurt, he would obviously be in the race and Graham would be forced to sit this out just like his dad, Bobby, did 30 years ago for the 1993 Indy 500. And that was, in fact, my first race, the 93 Indy 500. And since then, I've attended 10 more. This year will be my 12th visit to the Indianapolis 500. Would have been 13 if it weren't for the pandemic, but there's nothing we could do about that. In addition, since 2008, Graham Rahal has driven a Honda-powered IndyCar up until now. So this will be his first IndyCar race driving with Chevy behind him. And the only two manufacturers in this race are as follows, Chevy and Honda. So it's going to be a battle going wheel to wheel between these two manufacturers. If Chevy wins the Indy 500, it will be their 12th victory. If it's Honda, it will be their 16th. Honda already has the reputation of being the second winning engine manufacturer in Indy 500 history. The most being Offenhauser with 27. And so, 
Let us look at the starting field for this year's Indianapolis 500, which consists of 11 rows of three drivers. The field average speed at 232.184 miles per hour is the fastest in Indy 500 history, less than one mile an hour faster than last year. In 33rd position is Graham Rahal, son of 1986 Indy winner Bobby Rahal, driving for Dryan Reinbold Racing in a car originally qualified by Stephen Wilson. In the center of row 11 is Graham Rahal's regular full-time teammate Jack Harvey of Bassingham, England. Ironically, Jack Harvey originally bumped Graham out of the starting field. Naturally though, Jack felt no joy at all and was quick to console Graham over the situation. On the inside of row 11 is the rookie Stingray Rob of Boise, Idaho, driving for Dale Coyne Racing. He began his career racing in go-karts at the age of 8. In 2020, Stingray won the Indy Pro 2000 Championship, taking seven race victories. Last year, he took one win in Indy Lights Racing. The 10th row consists of two teammates and one rookie. On the outside is Ray Hall Lenneman Lanigan driver Christian Lungard of Denmark in his second Indy 500 start. Last year, Christian gained his best IndyCar finish of second place in the second IMS Road Course event of the season. Earlier this month, he took his first career pole in the GMR Grand Prix on the IMS Road Course and finished fourth. In the center is Lungard's teammate Catherine Legg of England. This is her third Indy 500 start after being absent for 10 years. Most of her career has been in the IMSA Sports Car Racing Series. With an average qualifying speed of 231.070 miles per hour, Catherine is the fastest female qualifier in Indy 500 history. On the inside is rookie R.C. Enerson, with five wins in the 2014 USF 2000 Championship, which earned him runner-up, and one race win in the 2015 Indy Lights season, this 26-year-old rookie from Florida is confident in putting in a great result with his newly formed team, Able Motorsports. Row 9 is occupied by two sophomores and one rookie. Starting on the outside is England's Callum Eilat in his second Indy 500, driving for his second year with Junkos Hollinger Racing. Last year, Callum's race ended in the Turn 2 wall, resulting in his right hand being broken. Now that he's recovered, Eilat hopes for grander results. In the 26th position is Augustine Canapino, the first Argentinian to qualify for this race and teammate to Callum Eilat. Most of Augustine's racing career stems from successful touring car racing in his native Argentina. And with his country having recently won the World Cup Soccer Championship, Canapino is capitalizing on their success by donning Argentina's flag colors on his car as a way to promote tourism. On the inside is Canada's Devlin Di Francesco in his second start. Last year, he took an LMP2 class victory at the Rolex 24 at Daytona in a car which he shared driving dues with fellow IndyCar racers Pato Award and Colton Herta. Earlier this year at St. Petersburg, the young Canadian was sent flying in the air after he was T-boned by Benjamin Peterson. Miraculously, he walked away. The eighth row consists of one former winner, a sophomore and a veteran. In 24th spot is Marco Andretti in his 18th start. He finished second in his rookie year in 2006 and was the pole sitter in 2020. Last year, despite not winning any races at all, Marco became the champion of the Camping World SRX Stock Car Series. Andretti still hopes to follow in grandfather Mario's footsteps as a winner of the Indy 500, which is something Mario only achieved once in 1969. David Malukas of Dale Point Racing starts in the center. Last year, he finished 16th. His best IndyCar career finish so far also occurred last year at the Gateway Oval, where he finished second. The inside of row 8 is occupied by 2019 Indy 500 winner Simon Paginot of France. Last year, after seven years with Team Penske, he switched to Meyershank Racing and got a best finish of second place in last year's IMS Road Course Race. Starting on the outside of row 7 is Colton Hurd of Andretti Autosport. This 23-year-old Californian is the youngest driver to win an IndyCar event, which was at the 2019 race at the Circuit of the Americas at the age of 19. Since then, he has won six additional IndyCar races. His latest win was last year's GMR Grand Prix on the IMS Road Course. In 20th spot is four-time Indy 500 winner Helio Castroneves of Brazil. He is one of only four drivers to win the race four times. Helio hopes to shatter that record by winning a fifth. Three out of four of his Indy wins came from Team Penske, but his fourth win came from Meyershank Racing in 2021, which in turn was the team's first IndyCar win. 
On the inside of row 7 is Swiss-born Frenchman Romain Grosjean. With a few years racing in Formula 1, Romain is still trying to get his first IndyCar win. So far, he's finished runner-up in two races held earlier this year. Last year in his rookie start, Romain was one of the few drivers whose race ended in the Turn 2 wall at Indy. 2014 Indy 500 winner Ryan Hunter Ray sits in the 18th position. After having no ride for the 2022 IndyCar season, Ryan is back to race with Dry and Ryan Bolt Racing, which is a team that only races in the Indy 500. When Ryan Hunter Ray won his first Indy 500 back in 2014, it would be remembered as the second closest finish in Indy history when he beat Helio Castro Neves to the bricks. In the center is two-time IndyCar champion Joseph Newgarden of Nashville driving for Team Penske. This is his 12th Indy 500 start and has a best finish of third in 2016. Starting in 16th is Connor Daly driving for Ed Carpenter Racing. Earlier this year, he became the first driver since Kurt Busch in 2014 to race in both the Daytona and Indy 500 in the same year. Last year, Connor earned a best Indy 500 finish of 6th place. Starting in his sophomore year on the outside of row 5 is Kyle Kirkwood of Jupiter, Florida, driving for Andretti Autosport. Last year as a rookie, he drove for AJ Foyt and finished 17th. This year in the season opener in St. Petersburg, just like his Andretti Autosport teammate Devlin DeFrancesco, Kyle Kirkwood went for a scary ride when his car literally flew over Renus VK and Jack Harvey. Fortunately, he was not hurt. In April, he took his first IndyCar win at Long Beach. Scott McLaughlin of New Zealand starts in 14th, driving for Team Penske in his third Indy 500 start. Last year, he crashed out in the North Chute with no injuries. His latest IndyCar win was at Barber Motorsports Park in April. Local driver Ed Carpenter of his own team starts 13th in his 20th Indy 500. Three times before, Carpenter has sat on pole at Indy, but with a best finish of second in 2018, Ed is as hungry as ever to nab that elusive Indy 500 win. The fourth row consists of two former winners and the fastest rookie qualifier. In 12th position is Penske driver Will Power who is defending IndyCar champion. Five years ago, he won the Indianapolis 500 for the first time, making himself the first Australian to do so. The fastest rookie qualifier at a speed of 232.739 miles per hour is Benjamin Peterson of Denmark. But since his childhood, he has called Seattle, Washington his home. After two years in Indy Lights Racing, which scored him one win, AJ Foyt Racing brought him on board for the 2023 IndyCar season. The inside of row 4 is last year's Indy 500 winner Marcus Ericsson of Sweden. He returns with his team Chip Ganassi Racing. Marcus's win is his team's fifth victory. Earlier this year, he won the first round in St. Petersburg. Row 3 is completely occupied by three former winners. On the outside of the third row is Tony Canan of Brazil. At age 48, both he and his fellow countryman Helio Castro Neves are the oldest drivers in the race. After 11 fruitless starts, Canan finally won the Indy 500 in 2013. But at the end of this year's race, he will finally retire. In eighth spot is two-time Indy winner Takuma Sato of Japan. Ten years ago, he became the first Japanese driver to win in Indy cars by winning the Long Beach Grand Prix with AJ Foyt Racing. He would make history later by winning the Indianapolis 500 in 2017 with Andretti Autosport and again in 2020 with Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan. Today, he drives for Chip Ganassi Racing. The inside of row 3 is Alexander Rossi. In his rookie year in 2016, driving for Andretti Autosport, his Indy 500 win would also be his first IndyCar career victory. This year is his first Indy 500 not driving for Andretti Autosport, but for Arrow McLaren. In fact, three out of four McLaren entries this year, with the exception of Canaan, have throwback paint jobs to their cars. Rossi's car is painted to resemble Johnny Rutherford's 1976 Indy winner when he drove for McLaren. Starting in sixth spot is 2008 Indy winner Scott Dixon of New Zealand in his 21st Indy 500 start. Five times before, he sat on the pole. In the past few years, his attempt to take a second win has been ravaged by bad luck. Last year, he led the most laps in the race and made history by having led the most laps of any driver throughout his entire Indy 500 career. 665 laps. Unfortunately, fate dealt him a cruel blow when he had to serve a drive through penalty last year for being too fast entering the pits. Scott hopes to redeem himself for that mistake. 
Last year's Indy 500 winner runner-up is Pato Award of Mexico. In 2020, he was voted Rookie of the Year. Each year, his quest to be in the lead has been getting closer. Pato hopes this year he can finish one position better. Pato's throwback paint job represents the McLaren F1 GTR's victory at the 1995 24 Hours of Le Mans. In fourth position is Santino Ferrucci driving for AJ Foyt Racing. This is Ferrucci's best start at Indy. In his four previous starts, he's finished no worse than 10th. This is also AJ Foyt Racing's best Indy 500 start since Robbie Gordon started in third place in 2001. The front row is the closest in the history of the Indianapolis 500, with only 0.103 miles per hour separating the top three qualifiers. On the outside of the front row is Sweden's Felix Rosenquist in his fifth Indy 500. Last year, he earned his best finish of fourth place. His Arrow McLaren entry is painted to look like Nicky Lauda's 1984 Formula One championship car. In the center is Dutchman Renus VK of Ed Carpenter Racing in his fourth Indy 500 start. So far, his only IndyCar win was accomplished on the 2021 Indy Road Course. Renus has never qualified worse than fourth. Unfortunately, last year he crashed into the Turn 2 wall, but he was unhurt. Renus hopes this year is different. The pole position is occupied by Alex Pelot of Spain driving for Chip Ganassi. Last year, his chances of winning Indy were shattered when he too had to serve a drive through penalty like his teammate Scott Dixon. But this year, he's fresh off his latest win in the GMR Grand Prix and has set the fastest qualifying speed in Speedway history to lead the Indianapolis 500 starting field to the green flag. That average speed is 234.217 miles per hour. That Indy 500 fans is the starting field for the 2023 Indianapolis 500. And it's also amazing to know that three whole teams, Arrow McLaren, AJ Foyt Racing, and Chip Ganassi, all managed to get their entries in the top 12. So that's only a third of the entire field. 33 drivers, when they take the green flag, will race at over 235 miles per hour for 200 laps. But in the end, only one will come out victorious. And we'll be drinking cold milk, win over a million dollars in prize money, and a place in history as a winner of the Indianapolis 500. Tune in this Sunday, May 28th on NBC at 11 a.m. Eastern Time to see the greatest spectacle in racing unfold. By the same token, there's additional pre-race coverage on Peacock, which I will show in the credits of this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you liked my videos, please subscribe to Formula Pun Racer for more racing humor and racing news. And I'll see you all at Indianapolis. Well, it's time to get packing for the greatest race in the world as I head out to the Indianapolis 500. See you on race day, IndyCar fans. I'm Aaron Cylinder, firing on all cylinders.